BCA Hub video series brings together the latest video tech tips on wheel hubs, bearings, and seals, featuring the experts you trust. Brought to you by BCA Bearings by NTN. Learn more at bcabearings.com. If you work behind the counter or shop, you wear many hats. One of these roles is logistics manager for parts. In this role, it's easy to be fast or good. But for some jobs, it is challenging to be both fast and good without compromising the profitability and quality of the final repair. One repair that requires extra attention is Ford's Integrated Wheel End, or IWE, that can be found on the 2004 F-150 Expedition and Lincoln Navigator. This unit is twice as complex as some hub units. The additional content includes two roller bearings and a cog that works with the IWE actuator. Recently, a customer dropped off their 2019 Ford F-150 with a customer complaint of ratcheting noise and grinding coming from the right front. The test drive revealed something interesting. The ratcheting noise only occurred in two-wheel drive and changed when four-wheel drive was engaged. However, the grinding noise remained no matter what mode it was engaged in and also it depended on the vehicle speed, the intensity of the grinding. The visual inspection well, revealed nothing unusual. The IWE system applies vacuum to the actuator in two-wheel drive. It shuts off the vacuum in four-wheel drive to engage the hub and axle. This is reverse of how most locking hubs operate. If there were a vacuum issue, it would typically cause noise from both wheels, but the noise was only coming from the right front. The Ford IWE four-wheel drive system does something no other truck can perform. This system not only disengages the hub, but it also disengages the axle from the hub. This improves fuel mileage when the truck is in two-wheel drive. To do this, the IWE actuator moves a collar over the sprocket mounted on the hub unit. We decided to make sure that there was a vacuum at the wheel with the engine running. The vacuum gauge revealed that there was vacuum being delivered to the IWE actuator. The unit would not hold a vacuum when the vacuum was applied to the actuator using a handheld pump. We now confirm that the IWE actuator at the wheel is malfunctioning. With the vehicle running on the lift, it is easy to tell that the passenger side bearing was making noise compared to the driver's side. The technician wrote his diagnosis and recommended replacing both the actuator and hub unit. Looking at the part screen, I could see that there were many options for this wheel hub unit. Some part windows will sort this by price or even availability. I know that these are secondary considerations for my customer who wants the truck to operate with the least possible downtime. The unit selected was BCA's WE61945 from our local WD. It was not the least expensive, nor was it the fastest delivery, but I know the BCA unit has the highest quality that meets and exceeds the original unit. The IWE actuator, that was also sourced from the same WD. We contacted the customer with the estimate for replacing both the hub unit, IWE actuator, and some other work on the vehicle. He texted us back, two words, do it. When the parts arrived, we examined the hub unit from BCA. We've ordered other hub units from other brands and had problems. First, we noticed that the wheel speed sensor wiring harness was the same length as the original, and it had the correct connector. We also found that the harness can be too long or too short on some economy units. Many companies will try to go for a length that might fit multiple years in applications to fill out their catalog. The other thing we noticed was the sprocket that engaged with the axle. The BCA unit uses the same manufacturing process as the original, which secures the cog to the hub unit. This process is called orbital forming, which attaches the cog to the unit when it rolls the outer lip to the inner race of the hub unit with extreme force to secure the unit for its entire life. Also, by doing this, it also sets the preload of those tapered roller bearings inside the unit. Some manufacturers will use alternative processes to secure the cog and set the preload but some of these methods do not create a strong bond. The other issue we have found with IWE units can be the roller bearings inside the axle bore. These allow the axle and hub to move independently. While they don't support the vehicle weight, they do keep the axles aligned so the four-wheel drive engages effortlessly. Low-quality hub units might develop play that could damage the IWE actuator. 
which is what I suspected would happen to the truck. We had the car, we had the parts, and now we had the technician to do the job. I knew I only had a few more hours, so I was dismayed when I saw the technician on his phone in the middle of the job. When I stopped by the bay, the technician wanted to show me something on their phone. This never ends well, but I was stunned when I saw this. All he had to do was scan the QR code included inside the box. I guess this means one less trip to the information station to look up torque specifications. With the IWE, the torque specifications are critical. This is especially true for the bolt that secures the axle to the flange. The small bolt has a torque specification of only 30 foot-pounds. At our shop, we always perform a test drive with the personnel from the front counter. This is part of our quality control process. I took the truck for the test drive. The ratcheting and grinding were gone, and the truck shifted into four-wheel drive effortlessly. The customer came to pick up the truck, and he was satisfied. What if we went with a lower quality hub unit for the job? The price of the job might have been less, and profitability might have gone up, but the cost to the shop for a comeback and a possible loss of customer was unacceptable. I'm Andrew Markell. Thank you very much.